Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I really appreciate it. And by the way, like so many comments and questions and emails and Facebook messages and Facebook comments and I'm trying to keep up. There's a lot of interest in Luminar 3 with libraries. I'm having a lot of fun playing with it. Admittedly, I haven't had enough time to really dig into a lot of things. And so I get some questions and I'm like, oh my God, I don't know. Good question. So um, I'm trying to answer them all, but there's a lot. So I'm doing my best. Bear with me. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about today are the 10 things that you're going to be really happy that you know about Luminar 3 with libraries. And these are little tips and tricks and, you know, I don't, I don't want to call them gotchas, but things you might want to be aware of that maybe you weren't aware of and that I'm guessing you probably haven't seen anywhere else. Uh, so let's go ahead and launch into it. Okay, so here I am in my library. And the first thing is history. So if you go into a, let me find a photo that's been edited. Um, here we go. Hang on. There we go. So here's a photo I've edited. Now, in Luminar 2018, there was a little thing up here that would, uh, like a history file, and you could just click on it and drop down and see the history. And then I had somebody leave a comment on one of my YouTube videos and say, where's history? And I was like, well, it's gone. You know why it's gone? Because when you click on edit, everything shows up. So you don't really need a history. Wrong. <laughs> Jim was wrong. Uh, Jim needs to get his eyes checked. History is still there. This is kind of a little hard to see. If you go up here right above the histogram on this, uh, this third little um, icon is a clock. That's the history. Click on that drop down and look at that. Here's the history of everything I did to this photo, which as you can tell is quite a lot. Some of it was experimental and I went, you know, reversed course, whatever. But history is there. So my bad. Um, I'm still learning some things. There's little things that I'm finding and all that. So history still there and that's where you find it. That's number one. Okay, back in my library, the th second thing is that you can't view file names when you click on a photo, like there's no file name, and, and you gotta click on it to go see the file name, like this one says heading home copy, or under edit, you can click on, nope, sorry, under info, you can click on it, and it says it there. But you know what? That's actually not true. You can see the file names when you're in this grid view in your library, and you know how? I'm gonna show you, you go to view, and there's this thing called tab bar. Click on show tab bar. This little tab comes up and there's your file name. So now when I click on this file, file name. When I click on this one, file name. Click on this one, file name. So just go to view and click show tab bar and that's how you'll see your file names in this grid library view. That's number two. Okay, number three is also in the view menu. Um, if you click on a photo, let's say this one, you have a couple of things here and this is kind of a combo tip. You have this uh, view over here of your film strip and then you have the actions down here of things you can do like star and favorite and all that. Sometimes you just want more space where well, you can hide that stuff. So you just go to view and you go to sidebar. No, you don't. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I move a little too fast. You click here and it says show film strip. Click that. I just hid the film strip. A little bit more real estate for my photo. Now I go to view and I can say hide current photo actions. Boom, just did that. Now you can go one further and hide the um, looks panel if, if that was showing. It's not showing, so now it's gonna be showing, but I don't keep that open, so I would keep that hidden. But um, that's how that works. You can create a little bit more real estate for your photo, and generally speaking, you're gonna wanna have that sidebar open, but if you don't, you can also, uh, let's see here, you click on edit, and boom, it's gone as well. So that's how you can adjust this screen to get more real estate for your photo. Okay, I just reset that the way it was. The other thing I wanna talk about is the background. Like I always keep my background black, but you can change that. Now this is not new, this has been in Luminar forever, but you can just go to view background and you can change that maybe to white. So it depends to me on the photo. I generally leave it all black, but if you go up and let's say, uh, maybe you're gonna frame this in white, uh, you know, lay it out with a white mat around it, you might wanna look at it to see, well, how do the colors look? Like that one looks okay, but you know, maybe this one would look better with white, right? So just something to think about. Again, I generally keep it in black or dark, it's called, but just know that you can adjust the color of the background. And depending on the photo, especially if you're gonna lay it out, frame it and get it matted and that sort of thing, with a color mat, you might wanna take a look at it with different color combinations, just to give you a sense of how it may look. Okay, so the other thing is the trash folder. I haven't really talked about that. I made a duplicate of this photo here. So if you click on it, you can see it says Venice Girls 2. And here it is, it says Venice Girls 1, right? So that's basically a JPEG and a copy of a JPEG. I just renamed them. There's my final version, which I'm not getting into here. But let's say you, you got a photo. I'm gonna take Venice Girls 2 and say I don't want it. I'm just gonna move that to trash. And it's gone from my library. 
But did you delete it from your folder? Let's go have a look. I'm, um, this one is in my test picks folder. So let me go to test picks, which is right here. And you can look down here. There's Venice Girls 1 and there's Venice Girls 2. I did not, by putting it in trash, I did not remove it from my folder structure. But let me show you something else. If I go to trash now and I say empty trash, okay, are you sure you want to erase this item from, move it from the trash? You bet, I do. I'm going to say empty trash. So it's gone from the trash, back in all photos, right? I've got Venice Girls 1 and, of course, the finished photo. And now when I go to my test pics, it's going to be gone. I've got Venice Girls 1, which is the original JPEG, and I've got the... Oh, that's not the finished one. Oh, I don't have the finished one in this folder. Uh, but I've got Venice Girls, Venice Girls 1. Venice Girls 2 is gone because I moved it to trash and then emptied the trash. So just moving it to trash, you can actually recover it, right? Um, but if you remove it from the trash, it's gone. So I can do the same thing. I can take this, put it in trash. I'm like, oh, wait, actually, maybe I want that. So um, I don't have to go there, actually. I can just uh, take that. I think that was in test picks. I can just move it back to test picks. It's out of trash. And if I go back to all photos, you will see it there again. So trash one time will just take it out of your view, if you will. Trash two times will actually remove it from the folder. Okay, speaking of folders, um, as you probably know, you can just say to add a new folder, you can say plus folder. And I'm going to go get this one called brackets. And I'm going to add this folder. And I just pulled in some brackets that I had in a folder on my desktop. These are all JPEGs, except for down here, this set of brackets is a set of raw files. We'll get to that one in a minute. Um, let's see, I wanted to talk about albums and folders real quick because I still get some questions. Um, folders physically mirror what's on your hard drive, right? Albums are virtual. So I can create an album and I can say, you know, awesome uh, faves, uh, if I can type awesome faves, and I can stick stuff in there. So let me go over here to finished pics. And maybe that Venice Girls is an awesome fave. You bet. Maybe this photo here from uh, my hometown is an awesome fave. Right? So I got a few photos in there. Uh, it added this one because I was already sitting on that photo when I created the album. So it does that by default. But if I want to take them out of here, I can just delete them. And then I can remove this awesome faves album. Say delete. Um, I'm deleting this album. Yep, you bet. But guess what? I didn't lose the photos, right? So if I go to my brackets, I've still got those three uh, photos and if I go back to all photos, let's see now. It's I'm trying to remember what I had I think I had uh, a Venetian picture in there Which I uh, here it is. I think I had them um, in there So anyway, the point is albums are virtual. So it's just like a virtual collection of photos uh, Folders are actual real tangible uh, folder structure like on your hard drive. So just to be aware of that Okay, one of the questions I get is about presets, uh, also known as looks now, and workspaces. And how do you get them from 2018 to Luminar 3? Now, when I installed Luminar 3, it actually moved them over automatically. So I'm on a Mac. I don't know if it's different. I think it's the same for everybody, but I don't have a way to test it. Um, and if they didn't move over automatically, that's okay. You can go get them. So you can just go to File, and you can say Show Luminar Looks Folder. And it's going to pull up... Uh, in Finder on a Mac, this this menu, and you're going to go in there and you're going to say, oh, what are these? Well, these are my looks, right? So I've got all these different looks packs, also known as presets pack. The funny thing is there's also a presets folder, and these are just my preset packs that I've made. But under looks, it includes um, mine, like London Calling and Magic Hour. Those are all mine, but it's also including other ones that I've downloaded that uh, Skyloom has given away free. But anyway, here's the deal. If you keep scooting over, you can see I'm on Luminar 3 and Looks. Well, there's also this Luminar 2018, right? So it's now got a Looks folder, which has all those Looks in it and presets as well. But if for some reason they weren't in your Luminar 3, you can go to Luminar 2018 and just take them from there and drag them over to Luminar 3. It's a just a drag. It's all you got to do. It's quick and easy. And it's actually the same thing for Workspaces. I'll just go there and say File, Show Workspaces folder. Same thing. So I'm in this Luminar 3 folder. I've got workspaces. Here they are. Those mirror the workspaces that I have here in Luminar 3. But if for some reason they weren't there, they're still in Luminar 2018. Click on 2018 there and workspaces. There they are. And if they weren't in 3, just drag them over. You can just literally click and drag, right? So that's how it works. Quick and easy. It moves them over and they're there. Uh, they'll automatically be populated in your version of Luminar 3. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, the next thing is flags and ratings and things like that. So if I have this photo here, I can, I can mark it as five star right there. I can also go up here to image 
and say rating and you can see that it's five stars. If I want to go back to zero, I can unmark it and there it is. The thing is, is you can do a number of different things. You can set it for flag, you know, flagged or rejected. You can set ratings like I just did. You can also set color labels. So some people might say, all right, I'm gonna mark it as red, which means unedited, and I wanna mark it as green, which means it is edited. Or maybe you take some brackets and you take some single exposures. You can pick a color for each. Or maybe you, you do long exposures. You want those to be you know, blue and you want you know, regular single quick snaps, if you will, to be green, whatever. The point is you can do all of that, but the cool thing is you can then come in here and sort by the different things, right? So you can go to five stars or red or yellow or blue, whatever. So you can quickly get to those and then start editing. So it's just a nice way to organize and virtually sort photos by the ratings that you've given them so you can jump in and start editing quickly. I think that's a cool feature. Okay, another thing to be aware of is uh, information here. So if you come over here, uh, if you click on a photo and then go into info, um, it has a photo title, but it also has the date, it has the camera, it has the um, exposure information. One of the things I love now is right here, it has the actual exposure value. So that was one one hundredth of a second. Quick snap of like a super freaking amazing sunset in Italy. Um, but one of the things I noticed is the date here is the European style. So that's actually day and then month. Being an American, I'm used to month and then day. So I was looking at this, and it says August 9th, and I'm like, well, I wasn't there on August 9th. I was there on September 8th. So uh, just keep that in mind if you're an American. If you're a European, you're probably like, hey, this is perfect. Uh, but for Americans, we get a little confused because that's backwards. So for example, here's a great example. This was on January 13th. Well, there's no such thing as a 13th month, although let me tell you, there's some years when I could use an extra month. Um, but so that's obviously January 13th, not the 13th month, the first day. So just keep that in mind. That's obviously an HDR. I did that in London. Kind of a cool photo, really. I, I love that photo. Um, and by the way, if you want more real estate, remember, just go over here and uh, go to view and, uh, you know, hide these things like photo actions and view and say hide film strip and you get a bigger view of it, right? I already talked about that. But the point really was here is be aware of the date. It's in the European, what I call the European format, but you also have exposure information here. So if you want to go back up and let's, let me go to my 360 bridge photos. These are long exposures. Uh, this one, I'll go over here and info, you can see that was 15 seconds at F22. Previous version of Luminar did not have the exposure info. Super freaking helpful because there are people, sometimes they'll ask me, hey, how long is that exposure? I'm like, well, I don't know, I gotta get my external drive out, look up uh, uh, Lightroom, and anyway, no longer have to do that. Plus it's just good to know because sometimes you wanna know how long an exposure it was. So FYI on that. And again, this was not April 12th, this was December 4th. Keep the date in mind. Okay, now I'm back to my um, library and I went into this folder of brackets that I added. And something I wanna talk about here, and I wanna sort these not by rating, I wanna sort by capture time. So I get them all back together chronologically. And that is Luminar uh, right now is not tied directly to Aurora HDR. I know it makes sense that it should be tied and I'm sure it will be tied. But if you take three photos and highlight them and then um, do uh, you know image, edit in, nope, sorry, uh, file, nope, edit, sorry plugins, Aurora, Aurora HDR, um, it's not going to send three photos over it. It sends one photo at a time. So it's not going to do that. What you can do is you can take these raw files, and I'm not going to do it because it'll drag out the video, but you can just, um, oops, you can highlight all three, and then, ah, sorry, I'm fat fingering, fingering it. Anyway, you can highlight all three, drag them to the Aurora HDR icon, and the raw files will drop into Aurora HDR as raw files. So that's a workaround, and then you'll have to pull it back over to Luminar. At some point, this will be fully in sync, and you'll be able to make round trips, I'm sure. But right now, that's a workaround to get raw files uh, and brackets specifically into Aurora. Okay, and the last tip is you can actually still view .lmnr files in Luminar, right? So I've had people say, was well, it only going to recognize my you know, file formats like JPEG, TIFF, raw files, etc. Uh, no, it'll also recognize Luminar files. So here's a Luminar file. I'll click on it. You can see right there, because I have the tab view, you can see it's a .lmnr file. And if you want to click on it, uh, you can go over here. You can see it's a .lm, oops, I don't mean to move that. You can see it's a .lmnr file, just a photo that I messed with. And of course, the cool thing is if you click on edit, you can see that it pulled over. This is a Luminar file that I made in Luminar 2018 and had on my desktop. And um, you can see it pulled over the different layers uh, and the edits on the different layers, right? So um, 
That's how it works, my friends. Um, it takes advantage of all that. And so Luminar files are good to go, uh, importing them into folders, and they will be recognized in Luminar 3. Okay, so that's it, really. Uh, I think that's 10. I'll call it 10. Maybe it's 11. But that's a number of tips. Things to know, good to know, maybe, you know, just things to be aware of in terms of using Luminar 3. I hope it helps. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. I'll uh, continue, try keep, continue trying to answer all these questions and do the best that I can. And uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Subscribe, like, share, all that stuff if you don't mind. And if I don't talk to you before the holidays, have an awesome holiday. And thanks for watching. Take care, my friends. See you soon and adios.